We have a bunch of players and we want to split them into two teams to play a football match, but the problem is that some players don't like to play with each other, so we don't want to put them in the same team. How can we proceed? What if I tell you that we can solve this problem by using graph theory? When we want to solve a problem, we need to precisely know what is the input and what output we're searching for. In our situation, we just know that there are people that don't like to play with each other. But we can convert it into an adjacency list of a graph. We get an indirected graph where vertices represent players and two connected players means that they don't like to play with each other. And the goal now is to split this graph into two subgraphs where there are no connected vertices because each subgraph would represent a team where there are no players that don't like to play with each other as you can see. Okay, but how to do so? The idea is that we perform a breadth first traversal of the graph while putting neighbors in the opposite team of the actual vertex. Why? Because if a vertex is in the first team for example, then all its neighbors cannot be in the first team because by definition, two adjacent vertices don't like to play with each other, so they shouldn't play in the same team. This is why we put them in the opposite team. Let's see how the algorithm works on this graph. We start by putting the vertex from where we're gonna start in the first team, colored in blue here, then we traverse its neighbors. For each neighbor, if it's not visited, we put it in the opposite team, the second team here because the actual vertex is in the first one. And we insert in the queue, a queue because we are performing a breadth first traversal. Check my video on breadth first search if you don't know how does it work. Now we pop the next vertex in the queue and we do the same thing. The difference is that now the vertex is in the second team, so we put its unvisited neighbors in the first team and we insert them in the queue. Next vertex, same thing. And so on until the queue becomes empty. We finished traversing the graph and we got two teams where no two vertices are connected together as you can see. We could do so, so we can say that this graph is a bipartite graph, a graph that can be divided into two sets where no two vertices are connected to each other. We can also define it as a graph that can be colored with only two colors, such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. Bonus info, in graph theory, a graph where no two vertices are connected is called a stable, so a bipartite graph is a graph that can be divided into two stables. Now we could split this graph of players into two teams, but does it mean that we can do so with every graph? The answer is no, not every graph is bipartite. And to detect if the actual graph is not bipartite, at some point of the process we've talked about now, we find a neighbor that have been colored before with the same color. Like in this example, you can see that when we went to the node 3, that is colored in orange, we found out that the node 9, a neighbor, is also colored in orange. We deduce that this graph is not bipartite, we found two adjacent vertices that have the same color. In our initial problem, it means that we cannot split our players into two teams without having two players that don't like to play with each other in the same team. In code, we need the vertex from where we're gonna start, we can just take the first vertex in the list of vertices. We also need a queue for breadth first traversal, where we initially put the vertex from where we're gonna start. We also need an index i to traverse the queue, because here in reality we used an array and the index i avoids us having to always pop from the beginning, which would slow down our process. We also need a map where we will put each vertex and its color. And finally, the set of visited nodes that initially contains our first vertex. Now we can start. While i is smaller than the length of queue, in other words, while we still have elements in the queue that we didn't read, we extract the next vertex, we increment i to move to the next one for the next iteration, and we start traversing neighbors. But before, we need the opposite color of the actual vertex, which is orange if the actual vertex is blue, and vice versa, blue if the actual vertex is orange. Now for each neighbor of the actual vertex, if we didn't visit it before, we enqueue it, we set it as visited, and we color it with the opposite color of the actual vertex. Else if it's already visited and it has the same color as the actual vertex, then this graph is not bipartite, we cannot split it into two stables, we can for example return null. After the loop, we return color map, it actually contains each vertex and its color. If you couldn't understand something in this code, you can ask me in comments down below. 
For the time complexity, we are just performing a breadth first traversal, and we are working with an adjacency list, and the time complexity of BFS with an adjacency list is O of length of V plus length of E, where V represents the vertices and E the edges. And for the space complexity, the queue can contain at most length of V elements, same thing for the color map, and same thing for the visited set. The length cannot exceed length of V, because each vertex cannot appear more than once. We got a space complexity of O of length of V. Now we've seen how to split players into two teams, which is not possible with all the graphs. But what if we wanted to split them into the least possible amount of teams? How would we do that? This is what we're gonna see in another video. Please subscribe to the channel, comment down below your feedback on this video, and see you in the next one.